This right here is Lake Caribe. A tourist destination with its spectacular sunsets and a collection of majestic wild animals. Situated along the Zambezi Valley bordering Zambia and Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe being the country that I was born in, in the capital city of Harare. I had the pleasure of visiting Lake Kariba when I was young, so I'm excited that now I get to make a video about this wonderful piece of infrastructure. As of the recording of this video, Lake Kariba stands as the largest artificial lake and reservoir by volume, covering a surface area of 5,580 square kilometers. The dam is a double arch wall, meaning that it is curved in both the x-axis and the y-axis. It was constructed between 1995 and 1959, and back then, both Zimbabwe and Zambia were British colonies. Several thousand people had assembled for the very big event, the official opening. This was now about to be performed by Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. The dam structure stands at 128 meters tall, and spans a little over half a kilometer across the Kariba Gorge. The construction of the dam was in smooth sailing. In March of 1958, 10,000 cubic liters of water per second was coming over Victoria Falls, which is upstream of Lake Kariba. This led to the flooding of the central Kofa Dam during the construction. There was also the controversial relocation of the local tribes who had lived along the Zambezi River for centuries. If you are Zambian or Zimbabwean, you are most likely familiar with the mythical legend of the Nyami Nyami which is believed to be the protector of the local Tonga people during difficult times. If you visit Kariba, you will find this Nyami Nyami figurehead everywhere. The legend says the construction of the Kariba Dam angered the Nyami Nyami. This led to the local people to believe that the periodical shaking of the ground after the lake was filled up was due to the retaliation of the Nyami Nyami spirit, which is not true. You see, the load induced by the feeling of Lake Kariba increased the frequency and the magnitude of earthquakes in the area. Needless to say, this magnificent piece of infrastructure has been vital to both Zimbabwe and Zambia since it was commissioned in 1960, providing hydroelectricity, boosting the local economy through tourism, and controlling floods which had become synonymous with the Zambezi Valley before the dam was constructed. However, all this might be under threat. You see, the demo is facing critical foundation problems. My name is Chidu Chashe. I'm a geotechnical engineer. And let's talk about the ways to rehabilitate the Kariba Dam wall. This is Geotex with Clemens. The Kariba Dam Spillway is made of six loose gates with a total discharge capacity of 9,000 cubic liters per second. That is equivalent of filling 3.6 Olympic-sized pools in a second. That's a lot of water. And what you are looking at right now is only one sluice gate open out of six. You see, if we take a look at the principle of conservation of energy, that is, Energy can neither be formed nor can it be destroyed, but it can only be changed from one form to another. The water behind the dam wall stores potential energy that is directly proportional to the head difference with the downstream level. All this energy is converted into kinetic energy during discharge, but all this energy has to go somewhere when it reaches downstream. For dam walls of this kind, a plunge pool develops as all that energy erodes the material upon impact and over time, the rate at which the pool develops decreases and stabilizes as the water in the plunge pool acts as a cushion and dissipates all that energy. In the case of Kariba Dam, however, that seems not to be the case. The 20-year sustained heavy spillage between 1985 and 2005 created an extensive plunge pool with the plunge pool reaching down to 80 meters below the nominal tailwater level. Now, there is a concern regarding the possible future continuing developing of the pool. 
which could occur in the case of intense spillage due to extreme floods. Plungeboard development of dam spillways has been widely discussed by many engineers and many models have been developed to estimate the development of the plunge pool depth. Given that the plunge pool at Kariba reached a depth of 80 meters back in 1981, it is clear that these formulas underestimated the actual plunge pool development. A revised formula was developed specifically for Kariba Dam that takes into account the duration of the discharge and therefore the spillage history. This formula estimated that the pool would reach 93 meters if all the floodgates were operated only for three months. This would definitely compromise the foundation of the dam. Due to the importance of this infrastructure and the threat it poses to human life if the dam is to collapse, the Zambezi River Authority on behalf of the governments of Zimbabwe and Zambia, with the financial support of the European Union the African Development Bank, the Swedish government and the World Bank embarked on a Kariba Dam Rehabilitation Program back in 2015. Yes, this was a complex task to accomplish. First and foremost, there was need for a deeper understanding of the magnitude of the problem and to devise a holistic and practical solution to the problem. So, a comprehensive study was conducted and a paper was published in the Journal of Hydroscience on this issue. This became the blueprint for the rehabilitation project. To understand current conditions of the plunge pool, a modern bathymetric survey with an echo sounder was performed in March of 2016. From the results, several solutions were considered. This included using splitters downstream of the gates to diffuse the jets and reduce impact pressures. The problem with this solution was that the thickness of water would have required unrealistic structural changes, which would have had to be fixed in concrete affected by alkali aggregate reaction. Another proposed solution was to build a tailwater dam to heighten the water level in the plunge pool by 5 meters. Remember earlier I mentioned that the water in the plunge pool would act as a cushion. You see, there is a correlation between the plunge pool volume and the power density. That is to say, the volume of water available to dissipate the power discharge from the dam. So building a tailwater dam would have increased the power density. However, a preliminary design showed that the minimum tailwater dam height would have had to reach approximately 30 meters. Together with very difficult construction constraints, this solution was cancelled. Finally, they settled on the idea of enlarging the plunge pool by excavation. This would serve the same purpose similar to the previously mentioned solution, that is, increasing the power density, therefore dissipating the water discharge energy. Now, this is where things get interesting. You see, to evaluate the plunge pool's future development and assess a suitable new shape that would guarantee dam safety, a construction model that allows numerical scale predictions was developed, and on the other hand, a 1 to 65 scale hydraulic model was produced. After the extensive research and testing, the optimum volume of rock to be excavated was 260,000 cubic meters, and the final geometry of the plunge pool was chosen to be concave instead of convex on the left part of the plunge pool. This would provide enough room for water to dissipate downstream and in particular decrease the flow recirculation towards the dam foundation and at the bottom of the plunge pool. To put this theoretical solution into practice, a coffer dam was constructed downstream to hold back water produced by the power stations which were to stay fully operational during the works. This provided a dry area for drilling and blasting activities and the movement of trucks and construction machinery. The works to rehabilitate this monumental and historical infrastructure have recently been completed. We are here in order to see the completion of the important stage of the Kariba Dam rehabilitation project. It's amazing to see how this project brought different people from different countries together. There were representatives from Zambia, Zimbabwe, the European Union, the Swedish government and the researchers from France. This means a lot to me, considering how important this dam is to the people of Zimbabwe. 
I've been your host, Chido Chashe, and you've been watching Geotex with Clements.